Hey everyone, I'm Northern Explorer. Welcome to my channel. After nearly three years of work, I can say my camper build out is nearly complete. In today's video, I'll be adding the finishing touches. When I finished my bench seat, the side looked a little rough and accessing the storage underneath was a little bit cumbersome because I had to slide the whole thing forward. I have since added a door to access everything and finished off the side. I'm also going to be using the space underneath the seat to house a porta potty, or as I call it, the toilet of last resort. This is the same porta potty that I had in my 2008 four wheel camper. In that camper, there was a space next to the fold over couch where the porta potty could be stowed away. It was held in place by friction and thankfully never moved while on the road. I wanted a more out of sight location for the camper that I have now. I purposely built my bench seat with just enough space underneath for the porta potty to fit sideways. I just need to build a base for it to sit on and an access door. I purposely didn't use drawer slides. I wanted to be able to pull the unit completely out from under the seat in order for it to be used in a variety of locations. On trips where I'm sure I won't need it, I can simply detach it from the slide out, leave it at home, and use the space to store other items. My camper's color palette consists of gray on gray with more gray and accents of gray. This camper really needed some color, so I added some in the form of a backsplash. These peel and stick tiles come in 10.71 inch by 10.59 inch sheets. They have an aluminum face, are easy to clean, and are fire resistant, which is important since I'm installing them near the gas stove. Simply score the tiles a few times with a sharp box cutter. Peel the backing off and apply to a clean surface. The interlocking tile makes it easy to seamlessly cover most surfaces. And that looks a lot better. Leveling your camper can really help with overall comfort. The camper only needs to be off by a couple of degrees to feel like you're sliding to one side of the bed. The levels I use have a stick-on backing and are guaranteed to never fade. I like these levels because they have a flat edge that can be lined up with any flat edge of your camper. Some levels on the market have rounded edges making it difficult to reference whether the level itself is level. I use the same levels on my previous camper combined with a good set of leveling blocks, makes setup fast and easy. Using a rock is for the birds. I usually shift it into four wheel drive low when pulling up on the ramps. It just gives me a little bit more control. A 
common problem with campers is mold and mildew. This occurs when you have condensation buildup in a closed off space. So my next job is to add venting to some of my cabinetry that doesn't normally get good airflow. I drilled a pilot hole and then went to work with the hole saw. I'm drilling from both sides in an attempt to eliminate blowout. I'm using a combination of 1 inch and 2 inch vents. A bead of clear silicone will help hold them in place. I'm unable to drill from both sides in the water tank cabinet, so I'm using a piece of wood as a backing plate in an effort to prevent blowout. The wood backing plate will also help to prevent an accidental puncture of the water tank. In addition to reducing unwanted moisture, the vents will also help to prevent my water pump from freezing on cold nights by allowing heated air to enter this cabinet. The cabinet that I'm sitting on not only houses my water tank, but it also holds my water pump. Ever since I've added the venting, it's basically turned this whole cabinet into a giant speaker. So I purchased some sound deadening material in an effort to quiet the water pump down a little bit. You can see where the vents are located in relationship to where the water pump is down there. I'm gonna to need to temporarily unscrew the water pump from the floor to get this bottom piece in there. Hopefully I can find the same holes again when I go to screw it back on. Last piece, I'm putting all the odd sized cutoff pieces on this outside wall. There we have it, one soundproofed, somewhat soundproofed box for the water pump. We'll see if it did anything. And after all that, I'll say it helped a little bit. In my previous four-wheel camper, I mounted the towel bar right in front of the sink. This seemed like a good idea at first, but the problem was it stuck out into an already narrow aisle. Also, the towel hanging down would interfere with the opening and closing of the cabinet door. As for the paper towels, I think I just had them stuck inside the cabinet. In this camper, I found a much better solution for both. Out of the way, yet easy to access. I made the towel bar out of some cutoffs and made sure to get a ratcheting style paper towel holder that prevents the roll from unwinding when driving down a bumpy road. The mattress that comes with the four wheel camper isn't bad, but there's definitely room for improvement. The addition of a one and a half inch thick memory foam mattress topper makes all the difference. With the addition of the memory foam topper, I can say that this mattress is almost as comfortable as our inner spring mattress at home. We also purchased a cover in order to help keep the topper clean. Besides keeping the topper clean, the cover has these elastic bands that help hold it in place on top of the mattress. Being only one and a half inches thick, 
It can be folded over, leaving just enough room to lower the roof. The only downside is we now have to store our sleeping bag somewhere else. At this point, my camper is basically done. It was a lot of work, but it feels good to have it all come together the way that it has. If you like what you see, I have a complete step-by-step -step build series that I will link to in the description. I also have an Amazon store where you can find most of the items that I used in the build. That's it for this one. Like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.